Okay, so in this video, we're going to look at Gaussian quadrature. Now, we've already seen quadrature, which really just means a determining area. In fact, uh, it's an old historical term. Uh, basically, just means determining area. So here, quadrature uh, <clears throat> means finding basically uh, the area between the function f x and the x axis. So anyway, let's get back to this. So what I've done here is I have here the trapezoidal um, from Newton quotes, the trapezoidal and here we have the Simpson's rule, the trapezoidal rule and Simpson's rule. Now there's a reason I put these here so that I can show you what's the philosophy behind the, the quadrature we're now going to do called Gaussian quadrature. So as opposed to Newton quotes, what's happening here is if you look at this, this is basically just saying h over 2 fa plus h over 2 fb. Okay, and this is just saying h over 3 uh, fa uh, this is, of course, the integrals from a to b, fx, dx, equal this, and sim approximately. Or they can approximately equal these. Anyway, so the point is, uh, you end up with 4h over 3, f, a plus h, plus um, uh, h over 3, of course, and f, b. The point is that what you notice here, what you need to notice here is two things. This this pair of things, okay, uh, the point and what's multiplying it. So here, the same thing. You have these things here, these numbers here, and these numbers, the points at which we evaluate. Now, who's to say that we have to, eval uh, we have to fix the points? Now, we look at the fixed points here, the AB. Uh, when we split the integral, for instance, when we look at the area, essentially, uh, between A and B, we decide, for instance, in the Simpson, equidistant here, this distance is h, okay? This distance is h. Now, even in the composite rules, h is set as the equidistant uh, uh, point to, to help us calculate all the fixed points with the fixed multiplier. So Gaussian quadrature works something like this. It says, well, look, why don't we do the following? What if we were to say, uh, for instance, something like, we call it a weight, uh, okay, uh, multiplied by f of, uh, let's say, um, uh, for the sake of argument, some t1 plus w2 into f of t2, for the sake of argument, okay? So the idea would be something like this, that let's let our rule, let's, let's call it a rule, okay, and let's change the variable here, uh, okay, to t. For the sake of argument, let me be a little different from x because we're going to develop an actual quadrature. So let's say that we're integrating over t, okay, and this is the rule. Now, if you notice, what I want you to keep in mind is look at these again and compare them to what we have here in the trapezoidal and here in the Simpsons. We're gonna. What we are saying is, let's leave these free and let's look at certain polynomials that we can fit, okay, just like we did in the other case, but this time we're going to find w1 and uh, w1, w2, t1, t2 such that the integral is exact. Now, what do I mean by that? For instance, now, be, uh, sorry, before I go on, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to limit my integral to between minus 1 and 1, ft dt, uh, and that's equal to w1, ft1 plus w2, ft2. Now, I'm going to go about and look for um, what fts should be approximating. So what I'm going to say is I'm going to go from approximating a t to the 0 all the way to t cubed. Okay? And what I'm going to say is the following. I'm going to say, okay, look, minus 1 to 1, t0 is just 1 dt. So that integral, which I can calculate exactly, and it turns out it's actually just 2, okay, should be equal to w1 now what is my ft ft in this case ft is equal to 1 it's a constant so w1 times 1 plus w2 times 1 now what this is telling me is that look if w1 plus w2 w1 plus w2 should equal to 2 if this is an exact if this is exactly equal right not approximately exactly equal then i go further and say okay th these are my test cases sort of thing okay so if uh, anybody knows neural nets, 
this is your this is this is your training set essentially these are a training set of functions to find out what w1 t1 t2 and w2 are okay that is if you get that reference if not it's okay don't worry so anyway tdt is the next function i'm going to look at so tdt when i work it out is going to be zero okay it's an odd function uh, minus one to one is uh, obviously an odd function between minus one to one is going to give me a zero integral now that would now be equal to in this case now ft is ft is t so this means uh, that we'll get t1 here and w2 t2 here so that's a second equation now if you start looking at this what's developing is uh, you've got one equation here this is a second equation right and i said i'll go up to t cubed so let me just keep going for the time being so the next one is going to be minus 1 to 1 t squared dt. And that, when I work it out, is going to be, well, t cubed over 3. So that will work out as 2 over 3 when you work it out. Now that's going to be equal to w1 t1 squared plus w2 t2 squared. Because now remember here, ft is t squared. So... When I substitute in t1, I get t1 squared and t2, t2 squared. Okay, because don't forget, don't forget, this is what we're this is what we're trying to do. This side, this side, right hand side of the integral is w1 ft1 plus w2 ft2. Okay, ft is changing every time. It's one here, it's t here, it's t squared here. So correspondingly, you have one here, t1 here, and t1 squared. One here, t2, and t2 squared. Okay. So anyway, this is just to just to get you to be clear on what's what actually uh, am I doing here one more one to one uh, t cubed this time and that is going to be zero because it's an odd function an odd function over minus one to one is going to give me a zero integral so that's going to be equal to then w1 t1 cubed plus w2 t2 cubed and that's equal to zero so I've got my four equations and I've got four unknowns because uh, what we're looking for are w1 w2 t1 and t2 because that's what we said we want to have flexible uh, flexibility and we're going to set up the uh, the quadrature ourselves okay this idea is called gaussian quadrature now we're not done yet of course and we have to solve now what you have essentially here are simultaneous four equations and four unknowns the problem is they're not linear they're nonlinear equations and not necessarily always easy to solve. However, the advantage of the minus one to one integral, uh, we know that we can take some advantage of this uh, fact. So remember that around minus one to one, where we're trying to set up this integral and therefore set up this quadrature, we expect that the, um, the value of t1 and t2 for f will most likely it is going to be symmetric so we expect it to be equal so um for instance you can see several things already uh, uh that are happening if you look at this uh this equation here uh let's call this equation two w1 t1 cubed okay is going to be negative w2 t2 cubed okay so now the question is what do I do next? Very easy. If I divide uh, divide this equation by this equation, I'm going to end up with uh, the w1s will cancel, w2s will cancel, the negative sign will cancel. I'll have t1 squared equals t2 squared. Okay. So I'll call this equation uh, five and this equation six. So this comes from divide six by five. This is 5, okay? So this implies further that T1 is equal to plus or minus T2. Now, now T1 equal to T2 is not going to work because if I let T1 equal to T2, it will not satisfy uh, some of the equations, uh, which, let me tell you. So for instance, if T1 is equal to T2, this W1 plus W2 from 2, when you substitute t1 equals t2 it's going to give you w1 plus w2 equals zero and the second one okay so this will cause a contradiction because we already know that w1 
plus W2 is equal to 2. So that, those will not have a solution. So therefore, T1 cannot be equal to T2. That's rejected. So what's left is the only other possibility is T1 equals negative T2, and we will proceed with that. Hope and it, it actually is fine. Besides, you will see the symmetry part of it here as well. But anyway, let me let me just go further. So T1 equals minus T2. Now, if T1 is equal to minus T2, then um, if I substitute that into um, equation two, okay, I get that tells us that basically T1 squared plus T2 squared is equal to two thirds. Don't forget that T1 is supposed to be minus T2. This implies that, in fact, two T uh, two squared is equal to two thirds, which implies that T2 is equal to square root two over. Oh, I'm sorry, um, one over three. So, and of course, plus or minus. Now, of course, if T2 is that, then T1 is the negative of it. So, uh, we therefore have basically the solution that T1, for instance, we'll let it be one over root three, then T2 is equal to negative one over root three. So now we've got our quadrature. Let's look at our quadrature. Um, this means that the integral from minus one to one f t dt, okay, is equal to f of one over square root three plus f of negative uh, one over root three. Now the pro problem is the following. When we usually solve these integrals, okay, when we usually solve these integrals, we are trying to solve integrals like this, which is from A to B. We need to have that flexibility. This minus one to one is not going to work. So, but this is easily adjusted, okay? Let's just put a little block on this and let's work with this minus one to one versus A, B. This is simply, uh, this can be easily achieved by a change of variable, okay? This is very easily achieved by a change of variable. So if we go and make the variable change, we introduced, we say X. So what we're trying to do is say A to B fx dx. Now what is that in terms of the t's? Okay, so we need to we need to look at that. So if we say x is equal to b minus a times t plus b plus a all divided by 2, okay, then of course dx uh, is equal to b minus a over 2 dt, okay, and we've got our two pairs and that means basically now that we can write the integral. So this means, therefore, uh, our integral a to b fx dx, okay, is equal to the integral from minus one to one, okay, of f of all, all together we'll have b minus a, okay, into t plus b plus a, all over two, okay, multiplied by b minus a over two. Now the b minus a over two can be slipped out because it's just a constant and we end up with this. So this transformation, okay, will take care of uh, zero to 1.2 sine x dx. Uh, we are expecting this to be the value for it. Now let's try to actually apply uh, the Gaussian quadrature. Now the first thing we have to do is of course, remember uh, a is zero, and b is 1.2. So this implies that our change of variable will be b minus a, which is 1.2 uh, t plus 1.2 all divided by two. Now that will become 0.6 t plus 0.6. Uh, that's your x. Now this means this implies that the dx is just gonna be 0.6 dt. So our integral, this integral, is there equal to then minus one to one the 0.6 is outside, okay? We'll move that outside, and then we have a sine of, in fact, 0.6t plus 0.6dt, okay? So now, that, according to the quadrature, will be, leave the 0.6 outside, the function, which is sine of, it's 0.6 over root three, okay, plus 0.6, and then plus sine of, negative 0.6 over root 3 plus 0.6. Now when you work this out, so here you see the answer turns out to be 0.637, uh, 3216. So it's about third order accurate.
Now, in general, that's what we expect. The quadrature we have here, in fact, is order three accurate. Its accuracy level is order three, because if we compare this to um, basically the uh, a cubic approximation to the function, that is about, uh, according to the Taylor series, about, about order three accurate. Now, one thing to understand, one, th one important thing that you might be missing is why did we go for uh, these particular uh, one t, t squared and t cubed? Why did we go for these? Now, for that, to understand that, you need to go back to your linear algebra. Uh, as you know, one t, t squared and t cubed form a basis for, uh, form a basis for p3 space, okay? So p3 space, which means the space of all cubic polynomials. Uh, one t, t squared and t cubed form a basis for that. Now, if you don't know what a basis is, you need to go look at some of the uh, linear algebra videos and there is a video on bases. Uh, uh, that means they have vectors that are linearly independent and span a set or, or span the entire space, uh, whatever space they span, they form a basis for that space. So anyway, uh, that's, uh, that's something you have to go study if you don't know what bases are, or you probably don't remember. But anyway, uh, let's get back to this. So 1t t squared and t cubed form a basis for t cubes. What that means is any t cubic function you can think of, any cubic polynomial can be represented by these four ingredients. So you can think about these as the four pieces that make any cubic polynomial. So rather than looking at any general uh, cubic polynomial, these guys represent uh, I mean, it, uh, these four represent, in fact, all the four. And any integral can be broken up into the sum of these anyway, okay? So, uh, because since uh, integration is a linear process. Anyway, that's the logic behind it. That's the idea why we use the, the same, you know, uh, why we used 1t, t squared, and t cubed. Next point to look at. In the next video, I'm going to try to see, uh, I'm going to show you one more so we'll go to the next quadrature level and we'll see that actually there's a very interesting mathematical connection between this and the Legendre's equation. Thank you.